Hi guys, and welcome back to my channel. I thought for a little bit of a different change, I would start adding some facts over my music <laughs> with whatever animal I am currently drawing. So today, I'm actually drawing a capuchin monkey. So if you enjoy this and you like when I go over the facts while I'm doing the art piece, please comment below and let me know to do it more. Anyways, let's get started. They're named after the capuchin fries, and so is cappuccino. In 1525, a Franciscan monk named Matteo de Basquio broke with his order's traditions. He wanted to return to the ways of St. Francis and live more austere, hermit-like life. Basquio helped found a group called the Order of Friars Minor Capuchin, whose members are often called Capuchin monks. They wear a brown pointed hood called the Capuchino. Those friars with the brown hoods were familiar to the European explorers who visited the forests of the New World. When these explorers encountered the capuchins in the wild, they couldn't help but think that those monkeys with the hood-like tufts of brown hair looked an awful lot like the capuchins' friars, so they named them after the capuchins. The beverage known as cappuccino was probably also named after these coffee-colored monks, or robes, so... One species was only recently dis rediscovered, as in discovered again. Capuchins are a group of small monkeys with long tails that can wrap around tree branches. Their fur comes in a variety of coffee-like shades, from black to the black horn capuchin, caramel, the golden-bellied capuchin, or cream, the white-headed capuchin. They fall into two broad categories, the tufted and untufted. They're native to Central and South America. Way back in 1648, a naturalist named George Mark Grave published a description in a PDF format of the blonde, long-haired capuchin. But he didn't collect a specimen, so nobody really took him seriously, and its identity remained a mystery. When 350 years later, in 2006, scientists finally figured out what Mar what Mark Grave's monkey actually looked like, and that it was a real monkey, and it was dubbed the blonde capuchin. It's critically endangered with just 180 mature adults left. Another thing about capuchins is they're pretty famous on TV. With their cute faces and charming antics, capuchin monkeys have appeared in all sorts of different performances and TV shows. Victor Victorian organ grinders had capuchins that danced and collected coins. They would even dress them up in jockey outfits and make them ride racing greyhounds. And more recently, they've even appeared in certain movies like Pirates of the Caribbean. But I think the most popular capuchin for, capuchin for Gen Xers especially is Marcel, which was Ross's pet monkey from the TV show Friends. Marcel was played by a female monkey named Katie. She's since gone to appear on other TV shows, movies, and commercials. She's the little unofficial mascot of the Los Angeles baseball team. Or Angels baseball team, sorry. These appearances have prompted people to want pet capuchins, but capuchins are pretty complex animals and they can get pretty aggressive, which is why most animal welfare organizations urge people to not keep them as pets, and a lot of that goes because they're actually highly social and they live in groups. They navigate through the social world with a complex set of facial expressions, and if you look at my capuchin's face, I even tried to capture a little bit of facial expression in it. Hopefully, <laughs> I did okay. Anyways, high-ranking males are usually the fathers of all groups, babies, but they carefully avoid inbreeding. Once the dominant male's daughters grow up, they usually only mate with lower-ranking males, and capuchins often seem to have a sense of fairness. They avoid other capuchins who seem to be, I don't know, selfish? <laughs> but before you start drawing too many connections between their behavior and ours, you should probably know that they like to poke each other in the eyes to reinforce bonds. See. Susan Perry of the UCLA has been studying white-faced capuchins in the jungle of Costa Rica for 25 years. And she and her team have observed some amazing monkey business. Capuchins also often invent new behaviors, or as Dr. Perry calls them, traditions, that spread through the group. Wonder if each group has its own traditions. Pretty curious about that myself. Anyways, I'm carrying on. One of them is shoving your finger in someone else's eye. Other traditions include snipping each other's hands and sucking on tails and fingers and ears. Capuchins have even been known to bite a tuft of hair from another's face and pass it around with their mouths. This might all be about reinforcing social bonds. Just don't try it with your coworkers or classmates. It may not work out as well for you. Another interesting fact about capuchins is they use tools. 
by now we know that other apes, such as chimpanzees, use tools. But thanks to capuchins, we know that other monkeys do it too. Capuchins are the first non-ape primates that we have observed using tools in the wild. Where do capuchin, capuchins skillfully crack nuts using hammers like rocks and an anvil? Other species use tools and even the recently rediscovered blonde capuchin has gotten into the act. It fishes out termites of their mounds with a special technique that includes a stick rotation and tapping the nest. Another probably interesting but not as pleasing fact about capuchins is they happen to like to wash with pee. Capuchins and some other New World monkey species do something called urine washing. The pee on their hands is used, they use it to wash their feet. Scientists aren't exactly sure why, but it may be a social cue. Capuchins may work urine wash to calm down aggressive friends, and males may do it to appease females or convey their excitement. It may also be about improving a monkey's grip on slippery trees by making its hands and feet stickier. Personally, I'd rather wear socks with the rubber base, but to each their own. Who knows why they do it in the animal kingdom. Another interesting fact is some female capuchins actually throw rocks at cute males. Females in a group of bearded capuchins have been observed throwing rocks at males in an apparent attempt to initiate deeper bonds. We're just going to stick with that one. Deeper bonds. Scientists think that one female might have started the trend and then the other females just kind of picked it up and copied her. What do they eat? Well, capuchins eat all kinds of things. They eat flowers, frogs, and much more. The diets are pretty varied. They consume both plants and meat. And if the season's right, they'll dine on plant parts such as fruit, seeds, leaves, and flowers. Their animal prey includes birds, oysters, lizards, frogs, and more. They've even been observed eating another species of monkey. Ugh. Not particularly my fair skin meat. But, you know, to each their own in the animal kingdom. Well, what eats capuchins? They have quite a few predators in their little world. For capuchin, life isn't all fun and games and eye poking. Several pre predators look in the forest. Ocelots prey on them. Snakes are also a threat. Although, they risk being twacked with by, by a club wielding capuchin, because capuchins will whack them with a snake. But the most impressive predator that might be is actually a harpy eagle. This amazing raptor has claws longer than a grizzly bear's, and its wingspan is up to 6.5 feet. They're deft flyers, and even when they're hunting in dense forests, they are amazing flyers. They're patient, and they'll wait hours and sometimes a day for the perfect moment to strike. Female harpy eagles are twice as big as the males, and they're better able to take down large prey, such as monkeys. And they've even been known to grab howler monkeys, which weigh up to 14 pounds. Other prey items include sloths, porcupines, anteaters, and young pigs and deer. But times are tough for the young capuchin. It's not clear exactly how many capuchin species there are, but the International Union for Conservation and Nature lists is 17. And of those species, more than half are in serious trouble. Three are listed as, a, listed as endangered, two as near threatened, and four of them are critically endangered, which is the most severe category for extinction rates. So, why? Well, threats to these monkeys include habitat loss, hunting for meat, and for the pet trade. Let's protect our little friends out there in the jungle. <laughs> and remember, capuchins aren't really for pets, but they definitely make cute pictures. So let's leave them where they're at so they can keep cracking open their nuts, poking each other's in the eyes, and throwing rocks at boys for generations to come. Well guys, thanks for joining me. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you enjoyed the fun facts while doing the art, please comment below and let me know. And I will see you guys next time. Ta-ta!